Hi, I'm Peter Kalmström of Kalmström.com Business Solutions. This is part of a series of demonstrations regarding links in SharePoint in general. And as you see, you have here on a default team site, you have the edit links here. And of course, these navigation links at the top and at the left are all links also, and you can control those. As you see, there's no edit link here in the top navigation bar. And that's because I'm inheriting the navigation bar from the top site in my site collection, and that has the same. So if I want to go up to the top site in my site collection, there you'll see that I can edit the links there. But I can't do it on a subsite because they all have the same navigation. But each subsite has their own quick launch navigation. This is sometimes called the current navigation, which usually shows the content of this particular site. So if I add something new in here, just add a calendar, for example. I'll have to call that event. Now you see that shows up. But here it only shows up under the recent one. To make sure that actually sticks there, and not only the first 48 hours, which is considered recent in SharePoint 2013, then I need to either go into the settings for this calendar, the list settings, and here I can go into the list name description navigation, and make sure that it actually shows up on the quick launch here. Display this list on the quick launch. That's one way of doing it, and then it will pop up. Uh, another way, doing the same thing, is to actually go in and edit the links. And now you see I can drag and drop the links right there, so I can have it here. And then it will also stick there. So that's two ways of working with links to lists. You either go into the list settings and say that it should appear in the quick launch, or you drag and drop them here. You don't want them under recent because then they will actually disappear after 48 hours. You can also manually add links here by clicking edit links again and then clicking this plus sign here and then you can just go ahead and type in whatever you want the link to say and then the address which should be opened. And then you just save that and now you can click that and this is a shared setting of course for all the users of this site. Another thing that I want to show you is the feature called publishing infrastructure. And you need to go up to the root site of your site collection and go into site settings. And then you have all the features, the site features there, but you also have the site collection features. And you need to start with the site collection features. And then you scroll down and all the way down here you should see the publishing infrastructure. If you add that, going to take a few seconds and then you have the ability to control links in a much more granular fashion. And here you see it's working on it up here and if I scroll up you can see the little dialog up here also saying that it's working on it. Now if I go in and edit links again here and plus the link there and the link there you see I have the same, same dialog. But if I go into the site settings you see there's a new section here called navigation which wasn't there if I didn't have the publishing infrastructure uh, enabled. And here I can just go ahead and add a link here under the current navigation and add a link there. And as you see this dialog is much more flexible. They'll do camster.com and the same address of course. But there I have the option to actually open in a new window. Here I can also go ahead and move this up and down. So I can have it under site content if I want that. So I could have a bit of a hierarchy in my navigation too. And so I'm showing two things here. First of all, that I can move it up and down. And the second one is that I can actually open a link in your window. So that's two of the features that you have with the publishing infrastructure. So there you go. Now I open that and that does indeed open in a new window. No, it doesn't. It's actually a bug which is fixed in the service pack 1 of SharePoint 2013, which I'm not using here. But, but uh, that gives you that feature even though it's buggy in the release RTM version of SharePoint 2013. So another thing that I want to show you with the navigation here is that you, once you have a lot of links in the top structure here, you um, will then run out of space and that will actually do a line break which will be rather ugly. If you select here first to show the subsites under the global navigation which is what this part is called now, then you see it's doubling up and that's fine. We'll just delete the old heading links there and then we'll add another heading called departments 
And here you have another option, which is to have no URL there. And just skip that. Of course, that won't be clickable then. And of course, this should be plural, so I'm going to change that. Departments. And then I'm just going to move these down. And the result, as you see, will be a much more granular navigation. There we go. Now I'm just going to save that. OK. And as you see now, I have the home site there, and I have the departments there. If I click HR, then of course I get to the same point, IT. And then I'm at the IT site. OK, that concludes the uh, demonstration on navigational links in SharePoint 2013. Thank you for watching, and please do look at the other videos in this series also.